Thank you, Sagar. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the earnings call for, of Sarah Sanitary Wear Limited for the Q2 FY24 earnings, which were announced yesterday. We have with us today the management team comprising Mr. Ayush Bagla, Executive Director, and Mr. Vikas Kothari, CFO of Sarah Sanitary Wear. We will start with brief opening remarks from the management, following which we shall open the call for Q&A. A quick disclaimer before we begin, some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a detailed note in this regard is contained in the results documents that have been shared with all of you earlier. I would now turn the call over to Mr. Arish Bagla for his opening remarks. Good morning, everyone. The earnings for the quarter ended 30th September 2023 were adopted by the Board of Directors yesterday, 1st November 2023. The earnings documents have been released to the stock exchanges. Some of the objectives of the call, some of the objectives the company has made significant progress in for this financial year are number one, enabling Sarah to be further entrenched across consumer demand trends with varied product offerings. Number two, gaining market share and making deeper inroads into the B2C consumer consciousness. Number three, capitalizing on manufacturing efficiencies to realize product differentiation while delivering value to consumers. And number four, upgrade and refresh consumer perception of the brand. I am pleased to share that we continue to make substantial progress on these objectives. During the quarter, we witnessed steady demand for our products as the overall replacement and project demand remained positive. Sarah's product and design emphasis allows it to focus on the B2C segment where it can truly monetize its brand promise. Over the last few years, all efforts have borne fruit to decouple Sarah's revenue growth from fluctuations in interest rates and housing demand, thereby insulating it from real estate demand cyclicality. Despite a challenging backdrop characterized by persistent inflation and inclement climatic conditions across the country, as well as the high base of revenues and other financial parameters from last year, we reported double-digit growth in revenues. Q2 FY24 revenues were higher by 11.43% on a year-on-year -year basis. In view of our strategic objectives to gain market share, deepen the B2C presence and deliver value to consumers. No price hikes have been undertaken since May 2022, a period of nearly 17 months. The leader guards the price. In view of adequate inventory levels in sanitary where we slightly reduced the pace of manufacturing this quarter. During the quarter, the sanitary wear plant capacity utilization was at 91%. The faucet wear facility expansion program to take capacity from 3 lakh pieces to 4 lakh pieces per month was commissioned on 25th September 2023. In faucet wear, the capacity utilization was at 122% during Q2 FY24 after considering added capacity of the brownfield expansion. With this expansion, which has was completed within time and below cost, the faucet wear needs of the company are secure for the next few years. The product mix planned is colored SKUs, quarter turned SKUs, PVD SKUs, and a few more SKUs that can be taken in from outsourced partners. This will enrich our product mix further. The gross margin decreased from 55.78 in Q2 FY23 to 52.72 in Q2 FY24. Historically, the gross margins have been between 48% and 52%, and the 55% last year was an outlier. EBITDA was higher by 13% as it increased from 77 crores to 87 crores. EBITDA margins increased from 18.11% in Q2 FY23 to 18.39% in Q2 FY24. 
our stated objective was to increase annual EBITDA margins by 50 to 75 basis points each year. We have surpassed our stated objective as the increase in EBITDA margins FY23 has been more than 100 basis points despite advertising spends in the year increasing from 32 crores in FY22 to 57 crores in FY23. In Q2 FY23, China imports were 18 crores or 4.3% of sales. In Q2 FY24, China imports were 11 crores or 2.4% of sales. Sera was already one of the lowest users of products made in China, and with availability of manufacturing infrastructure in-house, the percentage of Chinese imports to sales has been continuously declining. In a business which is brand-driven, the fulcrum of success is manufacturing quality and plant efficiency and new product-led growth. With regard to capacity expansion for manufacturing sanitary wear, a fully aggregated land parcel in Gujarat, which has been historically owned by a single owner, has been in due diligence. We expect title documents for substantial part of the land parcel to be executed over the next one to two months. During Q2 FY24, no price hikes were undertaken. During 2021 and 2022, three rounds of price hikes were undertaken by Sarah, which were all a demonstration of pricing power. As a strategy, the company focuses on multiple levers to drive profitability and does not rely solely on price hikes. At the same time, future price hike is a continuous evaluation. In sanitary wear, raw materials like China clay went up by 18% and feldspar by 4%, where, while plaster of Paris and glaze went up by 1% and 3% in Q2 FY24 as compared to Q2 FY23. Operating efficiency at the manufacturing level has gone up, as have the overall yields, which have negated a substantial portion of input cost increases. Zinc went down by 28%. In faucet wear, brass prices went up by 2%, and Zamax prices went down by 24% as compared to Q2 FY24. Due to the availability of gas from isolated wells near our plant, the price of gas from Gale continues to remain below market and will remain so in the future. Average gas prices have gone up to rupees 29 per cubic meter versus rupees 26 per cubic meter in Q2 FY23. Normally, Gale supplies 50% of Sarah's gas needs. However, in Q2 FY24, Gale provided 70% of the gas requirements of the sanitary wear business. Sabarmati gas so pricing went down from 75 rupees per cubic meter in Q2 FY23 to 45 rupees per cubic meter in Q2 FY24, supplying 30% of the gas needs of the plant for Q2. The Q2 FY24 weighted average cost of gas was 33 rupees, much lower than industry. Gas costs constitute 1.51% of Sarah's stock line. A focus on ESG began in 1995 with the installation of a wind energy facility. Capacity was gradually added and a solar plant was also installed in 2014. During Q2 FY24, 94% of the energy needs of the two manufacturing facilities were met through in-house renewable energy sources. The retailer loyalty program that was launched by Sera in Q2 FY23, which has now completed 15 months. More than 16,500 retailers have uploaded 2.22 lakh invoices on the retailer loyalty app. The feedback received from retailers has helped us in understanding the consumer's changing demands, geographical segmentation of SKUs, and evolution of the rewards program to retailers. Besides standardizing invoices, in Q2 FY24, 
of the total retail sales of 251 crores, more than 96 crores of sales were eligible to receive the rewards through this program. These are 38 percent of retail sales. After the success of the retailer loyalty program, a similar program was launched for plumbers across India. Sarah has been conducting training workshops for many years now, imparting installation and product knowledge to plumbers. A new program where rewards are provided to plumbers who recommend and facilitate the sale of Sera products is now active. New product introduction is one of the most important growth levers for Sera. During FY22, 72 new products were launched. The average number of products launched historically used to be 100 annually. During FY23, 699 new products were launched. With the sharp pickup in new design and product launches in the last two years, a considerable amount of resources have been deployed at the manufacturing level and at the level of customer experience. During Q2, FY24, substantial efforts have been made to ensure the product launches in the last 24 months penetrate deeper into the dealer network and in consumer buying decisions. This is very similar to the route adopted by most FMCG companies. Our highest ever advertising spends was in FY23 of 57 crores at 3% of sales. The budgeted publicity spends for FY24 is expected to be at 65 crores at similar percentage of sales. Sarah's share of voice was lower than a share of market and now with the increase in advertising expense, the share of voice is getting closer to its share of market. Publicity spends, which were 4 crores in Q2 FY23, were 15 crores in Q2 FY24, an increase of 375%. Population centers of 17 lakhs and above, which are tier 1 cities, constitute 33% of sales. Population centers of 3 lakhs to 17 lakhs, which are tier 2 cities, came up with 22% of sales, and centers with population centers below 3 lakhs, which are tier 3 cities, were at 45% of sales. We can now go over the financials. <clears throat> Revenue from operations in Q2 FY24 were 462 crores versus 414 crores in Q2 FY23, an increase of 11%. EBITDA, excluding other income, was 74 crores in Q2 FY24 versus 66 crores in Q2 FY23, an increase of 12%. The gross margin came in at 52.72% in Q2 FY24, against 55.78% in Q2 FY23. Profit after tax was 57 crores in Q2 <coughs> FY24 versus 51 crores in Q2 FY23, an increase of 12% YOY. EPS for Q2 FY24 was 43.74 versus 38.99 in Q1 FY23. For Q2 FY24, 51% of the top line was from sanitary wear, 36 from faucet wear, and tiles represented 11% and wellness 2%. On a YOY basis, sanitary wear revenues registered an increase of 4%, faucet wear revenues increased by 16%, tiles increased by 34%, and wellness increased by 14%. The sanitary wear and faucet wear verticals remain the bedrock of the business with contribution of 87% to Sarah's overall revenues. The classification of overall sales in Q2 FY24 was 43% in the premium category, 32% in the mid category, and 25% in the entry category. Inventory days. In Q2 FY24 was 72 days compared to 81 days in Q2 FY23. Receivable days 
in Q2 FY24 were 29 days versus 26 days in Q2 FY23. Payable days in Q2 FY24 were 41 days against 36 days in Q2 FY23. Therefore, net working capital days in Q2 FY24 were 60 days versus 71 days in Q2 FY23. In this quarter, the availability of product ensured there was no element of lost sales. This is the 10th straight quarter with no element of lost sales. In the current year, the CapEx budget other than the brownfield faucet wear expansion and the proposed greenfield sanitary wear capacity expansion program is at 35 crores, of which 7 crores were spent in Q2 FY24. As on 30th September 2023, our cash and cash equivalents stood at 751 crores against 573 crores as on 30th September 2022, an increase of 179 crores or a 33% increase. Positive cash flow for Q2 FY24 has been 57 crores as compared to Q2 FY23 which was 50 crores. In conclusion, I would like to say that due to the combination of internal factors such as production, throughput maximization, brand salience and design differentiation as well as the sustained macros of home improvement, Sera would be able to monetize all the growth drivers that present themselves. I would now request the moderator to open up the line for Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sangam Ayer from Concilium Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, you know, my question is more to understand the on-ground demand that is there currently. Uh, given the you know, high inflation, given the situation with regards to food, etc., uh, we are seeing slowdown across the board globally for, uh, and even in India regarding consumption and inflation. What's the situation on the processor and sanitary side? Could you give us some flavor as in you know, how the demand is on the ground uh, uh, on a YY basis? Can we see that going back Sorry to, to uh, the yeah. Mr. Ayer, can you please use your handset while asking a question? There is a lot of background sound. Oh, okay, okay, just a second. Yes, please. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, Hello? Yeah. Hello. So, uh, what I was uh, trying to understand is the demand scenario currently uh, in to, uh, for both fossil wear and sanitary wear, given the you know the macroeconomic situation where you know inflation has gone up, your uh, discretionary spend and consumer sentiments have gone down. So, can uh, help us understand how do you see the demand scenario over the next 12 months? So, thank you for the question, and it's a very important point that you have raised. Most important, you know, the company and the sector has gotten used to the tailwinds of the last 24 months. And at Sarah, we knew that the tailwinds and market being so buoyant are not a constant feature. So, from our end, there were certain building blocks that were put into place. First of all, we made sure that we remained a B2C focused company. So demand does not fluctuate so much in the B2C end, and at the same time, pricing power can truly be exhibited at the B2C end. So the focus was not project orders which were generally all available, continue to be very, very strong. We limit that to about one-third of our P&L annually. That's the first thing. Second, new product introductions and new designs. So, new product introductions on features, functionality, and aesthetics. Those were the things that dealers were given a lot of training on, which they could explain to retailers and retailers to the end consumer. 
so the discussion was not only pricing 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 as far as demand is concerned we don't see any headwinds we see consumers who have been hit by inflation may be postponing their decision but again the markets have come back again in october the trends of october are very encouraging there's been a dramatic increase in top line again in october so i think this is just a question of seasonality and though we have <coughs> exhibited a 11 12% increase in top line it's from a very high base so this year's q2 has been the best q2 ever last year's q2 was also the best q2 up till that point in time so we are dealing with a very high base effect but the numbers on a absolute basis of 474 crores are a excellent number to have with every engine of the company firing manufacturing sanitary wear faucet wear and then tiles you know there's been a dramatic shift in tiles so the tiles industry has uh, reduced some pricing power due to over capacity uh, sera tiles have exhibited the reverse trend and i'll give you some more data to give a you know add more color to that 41% of our tile sales are now gvt gvt is the highest end of tile only 3% of sera's sales are uh, soluble salt which is the uh, you know the commoditized tile then uh, double charge tiles which are the most expensive you know long slabs with the full body sometimes half body again expensive tiles are 15% of sales and wall tiles are 25% of sales so the more expensive tile categories for sera are increasing but at the same time we want to limit that business to 10 12 percent of our top line otherwise the easiest way to buy growth was three three engines to buy growth increase project project exposure increase tiles sales which is easy for us to do because we don't have manufacturing capacity we are a you know buyer and seller of tiles it's very easy for us to do that and three increase credit to consumer so we have not been tempted by any of these three engines for growth right i have a follow up uh, you know given that we have expanded the capacity for fossil fuel uh telling that when and in your committee you did mention that you know now with the external capacity we take care of growth for the next 2 3 years uh can you just give a flavor in terms of what kind of growth are you embedding here for the in the take care for the next 2 3 years this growth is available when the company was at 1250 even there there was a first question of growth and we hit 1440 then 1800 so uh, till we reach 2900 growth will always be a challenge and it will not be linear so markets are not, not linear and companies growth and uh, you know top line increase is also not linear so yes capacity is now available both on sanitary wear and faucet wear in faucet wear the expansion program is complete and the plant can be expanded further as and then required at minimal cost so i would say for the next uh, 3 to 6 years faucet wear capacity is done and dusted at the same time for low end faucet wear our outsource partners are very active and there is no dearth of faucet wear capacity in the window ecosystem as far as sanitary wear is concerned we were operating at 115% capacity utilization but once we hit a certain adequate inventory level we decided to tone it down to 91% this quarter so even in sanitary wear though the new plant is still in the works there is adequate capacity available currently and sanitary wear you know the vendor ecosystem is not as well developed as the tiles of faucet wear vendor ecosystem at the same time we are taking in a lot of products in house we are moving the consumer to higher aesthetics higher price points changing the product mix that is the aim so capacity was never a constant except during the brief period of covid let's say in 2020 and some part of 2021 other than that this is a 10 straight quarter of no capacity constraint got it and final question before i jump back to the queue is uh, in the 11% revenue growth you know given the premiumization has moved up to 41% overall uh, in your revenue how much was blended asp improvement and how much was volume growth see now volume growth uh, is a secondary objective 
you know, distinct secondary objective versus product mix improvement. So now you, you'll ask me the next follow-up question on how we were able to do that. We held prices for 17 months. We absorbed all the raw material price increases, the labor cost increases, and overall inflation in the company just by improving the product mix. So ASP normally because it's you know sensitive data that can impact our competitiveness in the marketplace that is not disclosed to the market. But ASP continues to go up every year. The range of product that sell also change and volume is not at all an objective currently. Okay. Thank you, I'll jump back in the queue. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address the questions from all participants in the conference call, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have any follow-up questions, please rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Onkar Ugarde from Shri Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I clear? Yes. Uh, good morning. My question was regarding just now you mentioned that till the time you hit 2,900 crores, the growth will be non-linear. I know the uh, at 2,900, 3,000 crores, you will be hitting a certain size. But uh, apart from that, what would uh, be the change that you are stating that till that time the growth would be non-linear and after that it would be a linear? So the, the best way to look at it is when you went up from, uh, you know, 1220 to 1440, we hit about 19 to 20% growth, which was an outlier that time. Then from 1440 to uh, 1780, that was also a 25% growth, which is also an outlier. And this year on a higher base, if the percentage is whatever, 16, 17%, in absolute terms, it will be a great number to have. Because to, each, to reach 2880 by September 25, we have to do something around, you know, um, 2500 by March 25, which is uh, easily on track. But that journey will not be linear. Okay, but after hitting a certain size, you will be gaining uh, certain advantages, right? So, can you articulate some of them? What can exactly change yes, after hitting yes. a certain size? So first, let me start with sanitary wear. We are the number one player in sanitary wear. We have pricing power. All other companies resort to price increases to up their revenues. We have not done that. We are the only company which has held the price for 17 months, forcing other companies also to relook at their pricing decisions for the last 17 months. So the market leader can do that. The second largest player cannot do that. And of course, those, you know, further down the chain um, have to increase their discounts, do other things, and down trade sometimes also because their pricing is now out of tune with the market. So that's our way of consolidating and staying ahead in sanitary wear. In faucet wear, we are the second largest player, but our incremental capacity is one and a half times our current capacity. So we are capturing a larger share of the growth in the market. And faucet where is where the opportunity lies simply because the unorganized market is equal to the size of the organized market. And the overall faucet where market industry size is double the sanitary wear market. So those are the two things in place. Again, if you look at our catalog, which is there on the website and physical catalogs are available with the company, you'll see you know, black mat, PVD, the kind of product introductions that have taken place, the quality parameters. You can compare them with any of the Western European or American brands, even in their geographies. And we are selling at a fraction of their price. So the headroom to take price up and for the brand to grow, keep changing its perception and move upwards in the consumer psyche is tremendous. You'll see our latest advertising uh, reach. The, the positioning of the brand is completely different from what it was earlier. It is an aspirational, aesthetic, 
brand appealing to a younger audience. So those are the building blocks that we have put in place. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, second question is on the uh, faucet where sales. Uh, you mentioned that around 36 percent, so that is 170 crore approximate sales uh, have come from faucet where. So after the capacity expansion, uh, what kind of incremental sales are you looking at from that? At 100 percent capacity, exactly. Well, first of all, you know. Uh, unlike the typical fertilizer or cement business where capacity expansion is directly linked to top line, there was no capacity constraints in faucet wear or sanitary wear for the last 10 months, 10 quarters. So there was enough outsourcing capacity available. There was flexibility in the in-house infrastructure to keep on changing the mix of SKUs being made at the shop floor. So Top line growth will be a large function of new product introductions and the retailer, dealer, and finally the consumer accepting these new products, new design at higher price points. So let me give you some numbers. Last year, faucet wear was 611 crores, which grew at 28%. This quarter, faucet wear was 164 crores, which grew at 16%. So even if you take 16% or 20% of uh, 611, it will be closer to 750 crores for the year end. And the industry is growing at single digit, and we are growing at uh, 20%. So you, that, that is exactly the phenomena that's most important. Who is capturing a higher share of the incremental growth in the market? Are we taking from the only player larger than us? Are we taking from those players behind us? That's the most important aspects of this business, rather than only capacity, because capacity is one of the ways to gain an advantage on cost and design, and of course quality. Then of course, your the sales and marketing team takes over, the brand perception takes over. Okay. If I can squeeze in one more question. So, sorry, Mr. Walker. Yeah. Uh, could you please return to the question? Yeah, I will. I will. Questions? As there are several participants waiting. Sure, I will. I will. Yeah. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Sanjaya Satapati from Ampersand. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so thank you a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, so you mentioned that uh, October has been much better, but at the same time you keep referring to the high base restraining your growth uh, capability. Uh, so, uh, so net net, uh, what are we saying? That is it like a 15 to 17 percent annual basis is your sustainable growth, uh, and that is something which will pan out in second half as well. I would say that uh, the best way to look at it is a medium-term growth target of between 19 to 21 percent. Now, some year will be an outlier, like last year was 25 percent, this year might be 18 percent. So, within that band of 19 to 25 is where we would ideally like to be, and some years will be an outlier. But at the same time, the uh, driver of that growth will be new products and how the consumer accepts new designs. It will not be manufacturing capacity alone. Yes, lack of capacity can hurt growth, but having capacity doesn't mean that whatever you produce will be sold. Uh, understood. And so my next last question is that, uh, and that uh, we are hearing about uh, many new players coming in, including Astral and others. And uh, you also are trying to get into, let's say, styles and many other things. So, Nitnit, in medium term, uh, how do you perceive competition and where, what are new categories that you can really uh, get into? See, normally on a call like this, we don't talk about other companies. But, I mean, you have studied this sector more than me. You will know how the new players, Spice players and other tile companies have been struggling in sanitary wear and faucet wear. The numbers that they have shared with the markets, they are very disappointing numbers. In fact, uh, if you see our uh, transcript from four or five quarters ago, I said that new players coming into the industry will be good for the industry. But that has not proven so because 
these new players in their race to bulk up only approach uh, project players and offer huge discounts so that ruins their brands in this kind of short term thinking the industry has not benefited the consumer has not benefited and let these companies show their seriousness by putting up a plant first because that is the first question that any consumer asks us where is your plant As far as Mira is concerned, we have no plans to get into any unrelated diversification. Even related diversification, if you want to call tile that, is a fully outsourced trading business where we operate on zero inventory days, zero inventory on our books, and zero inventory kept in our warehouses. So our vendors dispatch directly to the market, and the market sells and. we don't conform to the typical credit guidelines of the tiles industry so we have tried to keep our receivable days dramatically lower than the norms in the tiles industry we don't sell soluble salt more than 3% of our overall tiles revenue then wall tile which also is more of a bulk item rather than a very specialty very profitable item is limited our focus is large slabs gvt and double charge full bodies so we are in a very niche segment in tiles we don't want to be a very large tiles player we want to be a very profitable tiles player thereby we limit our top line in tiles by remaining in a small part of the tiles industry other than that sanitary ware and faucet ware are our only businesses thank you sir thank you lot sir thank you so much The next question is from the line of Mithun Aswat from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, uh, my question was: uh, you mentioned that uh, you know your designs and uh, products on the faucet ware are you know world class now. I just wanted to understand, and you mentioned that you sell it for a fraction of the price. Is there a potential outsourcing opportunity that you see there? Uh, using uh, you know the know how of uh, seraph and uh, uh, you know exporting this in a large way is that an opportunity that you see yes there is a huge opportunity and we do have a export business we sell to almost 40 countries but uh, what we have not done is put up you know retail touch points on those geographies with our own warehouse on our own books and kept inventory in those markets nor have we promoted the terra brand in those markets the way we have currently been selling is we have appointed agents and dealers in those markets to open letters of credits on terra once we get fully paid only then we export so that's a very conservative way of exporting but that's how we have started the business as it bulks up <clears throat> yes there will be a need to keep inventory in those markets keep our own sales staff and then of course promote the brand aggressively in those markets yes so the opportunity is very huge there is a significant cost advantage that we will continue to have in those markets now the aim is to see how how the brand does over there but as far as outsourcing is concerned on a white label basis we have tried it a few times for one very very high end niche brand in north america but that is not really our business so that is you know uh, from a r&d experiment it proved to be very interesting because we learned that we could make uh, sku which sell for a few thousand dollars but at the same time it didn't uh, it wasn't our business to manufacture for someone else right no i'm just trying to understand obviously you mentioned the unorganized uh, market for faucets is large so you know headroom for growth in india itself is very big but do you have some aspiration to uh, go beyond india as well once you cross that 3000 crore revenue mark uh, uh, size and uh, and beyond is there some sort of a target of a percentage of revenues coming from exports see currently that number is between 1 and 2% of sales and this will continue to increase even before we hit 3000 crores in revenues so yes there is a plan there is a opportunity waiting both in faucet ware and in sanitary ware so it is now up to us how we take that forward i'm sure uh, over the next 2 years you'll hear a lot of new announcements of new geographies being entered and 
this one to two number also going up. But we are not waiting for any milestone of 3,000 crore to happen before we take up this opportunity. And the last question, your sanitary ware plant, when it will be operational? See, the plant, the land acquisition will happen sometime in November and then the approval. So I, I would say the groundbreaking can happen anytime after March 24. So post ground breaking about 18 months. But, you know, I mean, though we can talk about it and I'm happy to answer any question about the sanitary ware plant, that is not uh, moving the needle. So as you heard, we reduced our capacity utilization from 115% to 91 percent. So there is adequate capacity available even in the current plant. Got it. Got so it. capacity constraint is not there in the foreseeable future. Understood. Understood. But, but uh, what is the reason then that you are looking for setting up this plant? This is going to be to, to take you to much higher levels in terms of revenue? Okay. See, this plant is uh, looking at the next 5, 10, 15 years. It's Got a matter of time where the industry size in sanitary wear changes dramatically. Sure. So the, the industry size currently is too small. It will change dramatically as the consumers start adopting a shorter lifespan for their products. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akash from UTI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Um, hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, hi, Ayush. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just uh, wanted to ask, uh, what is the sustainable growth rate uh, that the company can deliver in sanitary wear segment? Uh, the, the reason behind asking... You, this question is uh, actually, uh, we have uh, seen about 6% uh, growth in sanitary wear segment and it contributes to around 50%, 52% uh, of the top line. So, uh, so what is the growth rate that we can deliver in sanitary wear segment? So, Akash, you know this company better than anyone else. And you also know this industry better than anyone else. The sanitary wear industry uh, historically has been growing at six to nine percent, and Sarah has been growing at you know two two and a half times that number. You'll have to look at the company over a period of time, over a number of quarters, and in isolation, one quarter growth number won't give you the correct picture or the complete picture. So, uh, sanitary wear will continue to grow for us anything between twelve to seventeen percent, and uh, this quarter it grew by four and a half percent last year it grew by 27 percent so if you equate uh, this growth over any kind of period of 18 months 24 months that will give you a more you know informed picture but yes 12 to 15 percent 17 percent is definitely possible and we've achieved more than that over the last 36 months consistently and we'll achieve it in the balance two quarters of this year October numbers are very, very promising, and Q3, Q4 is historically the best two quarters for us every year. So you will uh, see us achieve the same numbers on a 12-month basis. Uh, sure, sure, sir. Just two follow-ups. Uh, sir, if you can share what is the growth rate in October month versus last year October month. And second is, uh, sir, uh, you said 27% growth in sanitary wear segment. Uh, I could not uh, pick that. Uh, what was it that you were referring to? Last year's growth numbers. So FY23 over FY22 was a yeah. growth of 27%. Uh, in sanitary wear segment? That's right. Okay, understood. Sir, but that also included some some element of price hikes, uh, primarily yes. because... Yeah. Which is a normal phenomenon every year for the last 40 years. Okay, okay. How else will you look at revenues? Right, okay, okay, sure, understood. Uh, and sir, uh, uh, sorry, if you can share October uh, month's growth rate. See, that is not possible. That Akash, you know better than me. That is not possible. Sure, no problem, sir. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh Bhagat from... Kotak Mutual Funds. Please go 
Hi, uh, morning. Thank you for the opportunity. My first question is: uh, In the starting comment, you did spoke uh, spoke about the gross margin band. If you can repeat that, that will be helpful. See, the, I I give you the gross margin numbers for the last many years. No, no, but you spoke about the band. It will be forty-eight to fifty-two yes, yes. or forty-eight to fifty-five. I wanted that. I have. So the, I have gross margin numbers for every quarter from twenty twenty to now. Yeah. In 2020, the gross margin was between 42 to 49 percent. So FY21, between the four quarters, the variation was from 42 to 49. FY22, it was between 51 and 56. FY23, it was between 53 and 56. And FY24, the lowest is 53, the highest is 55. So, is this also a function of how your sanitary wear and faucet wear mix change if you increment on incremental sales basis? I am asking. I uh, just want a color on that. And with no price increases, so this is a unique year. Okay. Q1 and Q2 of this year is a unique year. Normally. Every March and every October, there is a compulsory price increase. True, true. So this is a unique year where we said that we will not increase prices, we will gain market share, we'll establish our dominance in sanitary wear, we'll claw a lot of extra room in faucet wear, and at the same time, just by operational efficiencies and shop floor yield increases, we will try and keep our gross margin as close to the previous year as possible. I wish uh, the other question is fairly on the shorter time frame now I do understand to the initial participant you spoke about the medium term guidance of moving between a uh, growing with aspiring to grow between 18 to 25% or 19 to 25% now also in the start comment you did mention that first half had the impact of high base which I do appreciate that but effectively when I look at the second half of this fiscal uh, rather a second half of FY23 we are looking at fairly much higher base effectively from the growth perspective then effectively do you feel that the growth should moderate moderate at least for FY24 and before we start kicking in the aspired growth from FY25 onwards no in fact um, the growth is accelerating okay so because of the high base effect the percentage might be decreasing i am talking But percentage on only okay absolutely yeah. Yeah. On an absolute number basis, the growth is uh, very healthy. Yeah, I'm. I meant upon percentage when I meant to discuss. Uh, percentage again, our uh, requirement is a linear growth of 19% to get to our stated objective. Okay. Fair. Last year we got 27%. Sure. This year, even if we get close to 17%, we are fine. Sure. Got it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Namita Dikhe, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, I wanted to understand in the value chain, what is the kind of margins that dealers and retailers make from Sera product? Uh, and the second question is that uh, there is a Pareto, which is that top 500 dealers contribute to 80% of the revenue. So uh, when you look at this uh, statement how how do you think about it is there any plan to make uh, the sales more granular in terms of larger base of dealers accounting for uh, growth in revenue thanks so top 100 dealers are 42% of sales top right and 500 77% of sales right uh, so that is very 500 plus dealers these are the uh, dealers who have made maximum investments in the brand they have spent crores in working capital they have spent crores in receivable financing they have spent crores in putting up a very large infrastructure of showrooms three wheelers four wheelers sales people developing clients so they reap the benefits accordingly okay Okay, I mean, so then, in, I mean, then as a company, I wouldn't invest in getting more dealers, right? I will just like to make these 500 bigger and stronger to yes. increase my growth. That's right. 
but but with one addition suppose a large cement dealer approaches us or a large plywood dealer approaches us that i have these a uh, ready infrastructure of uh, 30 salesmen 10 three wheelers five four wheelers and 11 showrooms what can i do with you then we will present to him a fantastic opportunity of leveraging all that infrastructure into a new business of sanitary wear and faucet wear because he doesn't have to be taught that business he knows exactly what it takes so the new dealer acquisition of substantial size will be from adjacencies and adjacent hmm. these could be as far away as cement and plywood okay understood and sir uh, in the value chain what is uh, uh, can you please return to the question queue as there are no no just just my first question is not answered which is the uh, 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 margin for retailer and dealer i already asked i'll, I'll give you that so typically uh, the mrp is let's say 100 rupees and the company transacts with a dealer above 70 rupees and the dealer in uh, most cases transacts with the retailer above 77 78 rupees then the retailer keeps some margin for himself and shares some margin with the consumer okay okay so 70 77 and then mrp is 100 okay okay yes. got it yes. got thank you thank you Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Lokesh Maru from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so just one question on we have been able to contain our fixed expenses like the other expenses and the employee cost. So just wanted to understand uh, what goes into um, you know since the employee cost has just risen by only five percent or uh, so many the. Uh, the operational cycle or number of employees has changed, or how does it work? How have we been able to manage this? So, uh, Lokesh, I some of the voice was muffled, but what I understood was you asking about R and D expense and how it gives us an edge in the marketplace. So, I'll give you some color on that. R and D expense. We have a R and D department with senior personnel. It is recognized by the government of India as a center of excellence. now we have more than 20 people and this r&d center is fully funded they come up with new designs they are new you know innovations as far as flushing systems and sanitary wear is concerned rimless designs and the outside straight line aesthetics that are preferred by most consumers in sanitary wear currently that provides us a huge edge in design and aesthetics in the marketplace so r&d yes do you might say that nothing dramatic has changed in uh, sanitary wear manufacturing in the last many years but yes as far as prototyping is concerned 3d printing cad cam designs all those things have been implemented in the company for many years as far as faucet wear is concerned because you're dealing with a more robust raw material like a metal there is you know machining and cnc work and robotics have completely taken over the entire manufacturing process so yes r&d spends and uh, automation have dramatically helped quality upgradation for the products so on uh, employee expenses am i audible now yes, yes please so on ex- employee expenses and uh, fixed costs uh, we have been able to manage and contain these costs very well uh for the first half and for the quarter like for example our employee expenses have gone up by just uh, 5% right so wanted to understand uh, how are we able to uh, put a check on uh, expenses which usually would arise of the order of 20 10 20% right so any color on that yes please at the shop floor level yields have gone up dramatically which more than negate which dramatically in fact beat the inflation of wages so wages is a very large component of employee expenses and the fixed portion is one component the variable component is of course linked directly to output so there that is the variable component that doesn't worry us so much the fixed component we have to beat each year with increase in yields and throughput in the factory and also changes in the mix so that is why the company's thinking was completely reoriented and price hikes is not the lever for growth 
was the new way of thinking and we have achieved that over the last 17 months fantastic thank you sir back to you from my side thank you so much ladies and gentlemen we would take that as our last question I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you everyone for attending this call and for showing interest in Sera Sanitary Wear Limited. Sera remains positive that a strong positioning in the industry, overall economic growth would help it deliver steady and consistent growth going forward. Should you need any further clarification or would like to know more about the company please feel free to reach out to me or cdr india thank you once again for taking time to join the call thank you